Hi everyone, this is Corey from ID Parts, and in this video I'll be changing the oil on a 2013 Passat TDI. First step as always is to remove the engine cover, and on all these new common rail models there's no screws, just pop it right off. Second, take a T25 screwdriver and remove these two small torque screws which hold this coolant overflow return line on. Once you've got those screws off, also remove the torque screw that's holding on this plastic bracket. This just holds the injector harness out of the way, and we'll need to move that to get the filter out. Move the coolant line out of the way, and grab some rags and try to protect that uh, EGR tube that uh, housing likes to absorb oil, so do your best to keep that clean. Also try to move that wiring harness out of the way. Grab a 32 millimeter oil filter wrench, cap wrench, and put it on top of the filter uh, spindle. And loosen. I like to do the last bit by hand, just to get the tool out of the way. Once it's pretty loose, you can usually just spin it with your fingers. Getting this filter out is a little bit tricky. you got to tilt it kind of to the right there as you pull it out. Let's see if I can get it the first try. See, with my left hand, I'm also holding that wiring harness as far out of the way as possible. Alright, there you go. And I didn't spill too much on that EGR line. That's pretty good. With the filter out of the car, I can move on to the oil extraction step. Take out the oil dipstick tube and insert the tube for your oil extractor down the dipstick tube. On some of the new models, there's a little bit of friction, but you want to push the tube down until you hear it hit the bottom of the pan. It'll make kind of a noise, so you, you can tap it back and forth. Once the tube is in place, pump your oil extractor. I've got a motive power extractor here. It doesn't really matter what brand you use, but this has a gauge on it, and I usually pump it up to about 15. Uh, inches of mercury in vacuum, and uh, that usually gets the flow going. I'll speed up the video here because we don't need to watch the, all the oil come out. But basically, uh, it's going to get all five or four and a half liters out. While the oil extractor is doing its thing, it's a good time to change the oil filter. Simply pull the oil, oil filter off the spindle and replace these three O-rings. Once you get the new O-rings on, just take the new filter, pop it on. It'll only fit one way, and you can tell which side is the top because it'll have room for the, the teeth on the spindle itself. I'll end the new filter, and you're going to have to go and crook it again, just like last time. Get that harness out of the way, and once you get it kind of aligned, it will figgle, you know, you can just uh, fiddle with it, and it'll basically drop right in place. Once it's dropped in place, tighten it back up with your 32 millimeter cap wrench. Some people like to pre-fill the uh, oil filter with some engine oil. That's not a bad idea. Uh, I don't do it on the Passat just because it's much harder with that uh, the filter not being able to be in place. Put the oil dipstick back in place. Before I fill the car with new oil, I like to get all these screws and stuff back in place. Reattach the torque screw for the uh, plastic bracket that secures the injector harness line and then reattach the two screws that hold the coolant overflow flow line back in place. With all that done it's time to refill the engine with motor oil. Unscrew the oil filler cap and set aside. I use a 20 liter jug of Liquamoly Top Tech 4200. It's just a little cheaper per liter. And then I pour it into this 8 liter uh, container. It's got nice markings on the side so I know where to fill up. And typically with this facade I fill it up with to 4.5 liters and that gets me a good base point. And the most important step of any oil change is putting in fresh new oil. 
I know it sounds silly, but people have forgotten this before. Don't forget. It's important. After you've poured in four and a half liters, it's time to take the initial reading. On the dipstick, that is. Just pull the dipstick out before you turn anything on. Just be sure you've got oil on the dipstick. It should be higher than the top line because you haven't turned the motor on. You don't have any oil in the oil filter housing or in the oil filter yet. If it's higher than the top line, it's a good point to uh, start the car up. I'm just going to double check to be sure here. Looks pretty good. So let's start this thing up. If you were listening closely, you might have noticed the pitch of the motor change. That's important. That's when the oil has finally fully filled the oil filter and the oil filter canister, and the motor is at full pressure, or full oil pressure. When you hear full oil pressure, you can start revving the motor. Let's hear it one more time. With the motor at full oil pressure, I'll rev it a little bit just to push the oil through the system. Now it's time for the final check. This is with still cold oil, but after it has been through the motor and we know that everything is where it needs to be. Take the dipstick out, clean it off, put it back in, get your final oil reading. This one is perfect. It's right just below the top, top line, which is where I like it. Put it back, the dipstick tube back in, and we're pretty much done. Final thing to do on the new cars is to reset the service uh, reminder interval, the SRI light. Simply go into the car, turn the ignition on, uh, and you just use this for the MFA. Use the left and right arrows until you get to the setup screen. Go down to service. Click on reset, hit OK, and you're done. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks as always for watching. I am Corey from ID Parts. If you have any questions, email us sales at idparts.com. If you need an oil change kit, we've got those too. And remember to subscribe to get all the new videos in your inbox. Thanks again for watching.